Hello, everybody, and welcome back to week three of CAT 1134. I hope everybody was able to complete their assignment for last week. It's uh, very important to keep up to date and keep current. If you do start to fall behind, please take some time, get caught up, and if you have specific questions, do send me an email. Now, today's going to be a very short lecture again, and then we're going to jump right into the exercise when we're going to continue on with with our progress all right, all right so as uh, we're going to do most weeks we're going to take a few minutes to do our quiz right now so please pause the video if you haven't done the quiz already and complete that it's important to to keep these uh, going because they allow me to see how the class is progressing through the through the content and to ensure uh, the engagement of the students okay okay today's exercise uh, we're going to deal with uh, rotate scale we're going to deal with some stretching fillet and chamfer we're going to have uh, some line types and line weights that we're we're starting to play with we're going to do quite a bit in arrays and mirrors we're going to talk about uh, quick properties and layer properties we're going to talk about file handling and revisioning and how they are important to uh, our our workflow all right so without further ado let's get into the exercise all right hi everybody and welcome back to CAD 1134 today in week three we're going to continue on our 2d construction and today uh, we're going to we're going to finally create something that's a little bit more fun okay so today today's going to feel perhaps a little bit rudimentary for you kind of like when we go back to uh, to primary school and we learn to to draw something we're going to basically do the same sort of thing today uh, and where we're going to we're going to draw a house right and this is uh, perhaps a little bit childish for you, but the idea is that you're actually going to create uh, a drawing. And if you wish, you can print it out and put it up on your fridge at home and your mummy will tell you what a wonderful job it is. And, uh, and you know, fantastic. This is a stepping stone, okay? Uh, before we get started, there's a few things that I want to talk to you about. One is to make sure that we we absolutely follow the file formatting. The reason for this is it makes it much easier for me to sort through and find which files uh, I need to grade for you and which files uh, may not. Okay, uh, so what I'm referring to here with the question marks is that I want your initials. So for me, my name is Scott Lee Card, so SLC, uh, week three, W3, and the first drawing of the week, D1. Okay, uh, now the H drive, uh, substitute this with your uh, OneDrive. OneDrive, there we go. Um, the reason why we want to do this is you don't want to necessarily be reliant on your own technology i've had several students come to me saying that they have lost their file because they lost their thumb drive because their hard drive at home has crashed that they forgot it somewhere um, you, you don't have any of these problems when you upload to onedrive i had one student tell me that onedrive lost their file and uh, you know I think it was more the case of they didn't save it properly uh, for me personally uh, I do use OneDrive less frequently because of my remote access but uh, I do have I do have a remote backup that I have I have a backup on my computer I have my working drive and typically when I'm working between computers I have a copy on a thumb drive as well so uh, you know I, ha I have many many backups and yes if it is very important it gets backed up off-site as well using OneDrive or uh, an FTP server okay uh, the next thing that I want to talk to you about is uh, completing the blocks, okay, your title block. It's it's very important to me and to anybody else that ever has to work with your drawings that you complete these title blocks. Uh, now, as far as the title, 
if there are specific instructions given to you in your assignment you need to you need to do this you need to fill in the the appropriate information so that so that we're able to mark it uh, as far as your name uh, all caps is is always preferred uh, I, I don't think I'll ever dock you marks for using lowercase, but it is important to put your name in in an appropriate manner. The course is in here. Now you could say to me, well, everything's going to be CAT 1134. Uh, that's true right up to the point where you need to create a CAD drawing for a different course. So make sure that you fill this in appropriately. Okay. The uh, Here we have the the drawing, the part number. Typically, I would like the file name. So in this case, SLC-W3-D1 would be fantastic. Uh, revisioning, we're going to talk a lot about revisioning today. A scale, if it's one-to-one -one scale, that's great. If it doesn't, if the scale doesn't matter, you can always put in NTS or not to scale. And the date is always, always uh, appreciated. Uh, and it helps it helps with your revisioning okay so perhaps you're on revision one but you keep updating something or you're working on it you keep that date up up to date keep the date up to date keep 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 it up to date all right now uh screen capturing screen capturing is a fantastic way to take information from your from your your cad or other software and pull it into your uh, in, into your Word document, and this this is really helpful when we're um, do, doing assignments for other classes. Okay, you're going to find that CAD becomes a, a drawing tool that is faster and easier and better than trying to sketch something on paper, but with your pencil. Okay, uh, and we're going to talk about that a little bit more later today, but the idea is that I can take I can take my snipping tool and so I'll just go here and I'll type in snip and it will open up my snipping application. From here I can say new and I can capture anything I want off my screen including uh, some AutoCAD. And so you once you once you capture it there's a couple of things that you can do with it. Um, uh, we can save it as, as a file. Okay, uh, you can see, and you can see I, I do use this on a regular basis. Or you can use Control C and Control V to paste it uh, wherever you would like into your Word document. So snipping tool, fantastic fantastic tool a uh, quick easy way to grab some information and pull it in all right um good okay so without further ado let's get into the uh the drawing of this lovely house okay so let's uh let's start by opening up our autocad Okay, now that we have AutoCAD open, uh, there's a couple things that I'd like to point out. The first is that if we go into uh, start a drawing, uh, it will immediately open a blank drawing. And this is okay, but not really what we want to do today. What we want to do uh, in this class is to make sure that we always start with a template. So we could go down here to, to our template and um, there's a list of templates that are available and I've, I've saved one, but let's, let's back up. We want to start with uh, the template that we've been using for the last couple of weeks. So we're going to go back in to file new and we're going to browse to wherever we put our, our, our template file. And so mine happens to be here on the desktop. And so I will, I will open it. Okay, and if you haven't done this already, it it really is advisable that that you go at it that you go at it and put put your information in it. 
And the rest of it I can leave blank. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to say file, save as, and I'm going to save uh, a new uh, template file, DWT, <clears throat> and it's going to put it into the list of template files. And so I can call it my name, for example. And yes, I'll overwrite it. That's fine. And now when I go back in to create a new template, you'll see that you'll see that in your in your list of template files. All right. So now we've got our template file and we can see that it actually says DWT. And we want to we want to save this as a DWG file right away. So file save as and now we're going to uh, move this out of a template file. We'll put it someplace that I can find it. Uh, for me, I'm just going to drop it on my desktop so I can delete it later. And I'm going to call it slc week 3 d1 and change it from a template file to a DWG 2018 format. Save. And we can see now that it is stored for me on C uh, desktop and uh, the file name is correct. All right. Okay. So uh, let's see what we're going to do here. Today we're going to create some new layers. Perfect. So I'm going to go to my layer property manager. It's this icon here. And... I'm going to create some new layers. So I, as a as a refresh, there's two ways to do it. I can click up here and I'm going to call this layer house. Oops. And the other way to do it is we can right click and say new layer. And in this one, I'm going to say construction. And there are a few things that we can change while we're in here. One of them is that we can we can change the uh, the color. For example, I can make my uh, my construction layer green. Matter of fact, I can even go in and fix this. Let's rename that layer so that it actually says the right thing. I don't even know how to pronounce that. There we go. Construction. <coughs> And then I'll double click on the little page here to make it my current layer. Fantastic. Okay, so we can close this now. And you'll see that anything I draw is now green and in construction layer. All right. Fantastic. So the instructions tell us that the uh, left corner of the house has a location of 1.5 in the X and 3 in the Y. So let's start by drawing a rectangle. And the first location is 1.5 in the X, comma, 3 in the Y. There we go. That's That's it. Now the next the next point is uh, five inches more to the to the right, so we'll we'll put five in the x, and we want to go up a two point five. So the walls are two point five high. Uh, for those that aren't familiar with the imperial system, please don't get hung up on on a, on inches right now. These are just units, and we can absolutely. Uh, convert back and forth between metric and imperial. But the instructions are already set in inches and you're going to find in industry, there is a fair bit of imperial still out there. All right. Uh, so there we go. So we have a reasonable start. The first thing that we want to do though, is we want to draw these doors. We want to draw some windows. And uh, if we turn our snap on, there we go. And we draw, let's say we draw another rectangle for the for the window. You'll notice it's it's kind of blocky. It's it's a little too big for what we want. I mean, we could get we could get that window in there, but we'd have trouble doing the rest of this. 
So what we want to do is we want to come down here to the snap mode, the little drop down menu, and we want to go to snap settings. And we want to change our snap spacing to a quarter of an inch. And it's always a good idea to have your grid reflect that as well. So we'll change that to 0.25. And I'll change this to four so that it actually comes up as an inch uh, for these for the major lines. And I'll say OK. And that's not too bad. It's not too bad. Um, you do notice that there is a line of symmetry, though, with our drawing, right? That the left half and the right half are actually symmetrical. So let's let's take a second and create uh, what would be a line of symmetry down the middle. And so I'm going to go back into my layer property manager one more time, and I'm going to create another new layer, and I'm going to call this uh, CL for center line. CL. And I'll change the color. Let's say I change it to yellow just because. Uh, this isn't something that I plan on printing. And we want to change the line type. Okay, so if I click on where it says continuous, uh, it you'll notice that it gives us a selection of one thing. We want to go in and we want to add some, some more line types. And so we're going to say load. And the one that I'm looking for is hidden two so let's go down to hidden two not hidden x2 but hidden two notice that it's 0.5 and i'll say okay then i can select it and say okay again and it's now available to us for this line type so let's close this down and I will draw a line here. Oops, I forgot to change the, the, the layer, but that's okay. I will highlight this. I'm going to go back into my little drop down menu and I'm going to pick layer CL and I'll say okay. As a matter of fact, I'll even grab this and I'm going to stretch it up a little bit. There we go. And so this is my center line. Anything that I draw on the left side, I plan on mirroring to the right side. So I'm being pragmatic. I don't want to do more work than I have to. And that's fantastic. All right. So let's draw another rectangle. About there. Sure. And we'll draw that little window up at the top. It's not quite right. Oops. Notice that it snapped down to the bottom. Let's turn our snaps off for a second. You know, it's not quite it's not quite what what the doctor ordered but it's close enough the idea here is just to get some practice playing around with this okay if you don't like it you can play around with it a little bit more I'm not I'm not too awfully concerned in um, you know how exact any of this is it's really just one of those things that we're looking for uh, some practice. Okay, so make yours make yours look how you want it. And when you get to this point, that's fantastic. Uh, we can we can start to play around with it a little bit. As a matter of fact, I'm going to go one step further. Uh, let's turn my snap back on. And I'll start to draw the roof.
Not bad. Not bad. Uh, perhaps, though, I, I'm not happy with the roof. Maybe I want a little bit more pitch on it. One of the things that we can do uh, and why that why CAD becomes uh, such a useful tool is we can actually grab the grips. And in this case, if I grab the middle one, I can move it. And if I grab the ends, I can actually stretch it. All right. And I'm happy with, with this. So I'm going to call this good enough for right now. And I'm going to use the mirror command. And I'm going to grab just the house entity. Okay. So I'm looking for the windows, the door, the roof. I don't really want the box. And I'll press enter. And I will grab my mirror points and I don't want to erase the, the old one. Okay. Now, one of the things that we've done is we actually mirrored uh, these rectangles. The problem with mirroring rectangles is you'll see that I have two lines here. In this case, it doesn't really it doesn't really work for me. So I want to I want to break these up. I want to I want to explode them. Okay. And so I can explode by by using the X key. Uh, there's also explode in the drop down menu somewhere. Where are you? There you are. Uh, you can explode this entity and this entity and this entity and I'll press enter. And you'll notice now that there are individual pieces. And so I can, using the blue box, catch those two entities. Hmm. Erase those two entities. There, that's better. Uh, and I can erase this one entity. I didn't erase or explode this box because I actually do want that line there. Um, and we can, we can actually turn off that hidden line there for a second and see that it is actually reasonable. All right. So I'd say our house at this point is finished. So what I typically do is I'll take this now uh, that I'm finished working on it and I will move it to uh, its new layer in this case house this means that we can turn things on and off as we're working all right so the next thing that I see on here is this beautiful uh, bouquet of flowers so how how are we going to draw these flowers The idea is that I'm going to zoom in here a little bit and I'm going to draw some random lines. From here, let's turn off my snap, which is F9 by the way. And I'll turn on my object snaps so I can pick the same start point. And I have some random stems. Okay, don't don't spend too much time on this. We're just looking for some stems. Then we want to draw some circles. So I'm going to draw a circle, and it's that big. We'll press Enter to repeat the last command, and Enter again to uh, make sure that all the circles are the same size. And that's that's okay but all the flowers seem to be pointing to the back you'll notice that the stems go into the center so there's a couple couple ways that we can deal with this uh we could let's uh let's pick the longest one here uh, we could trim okay the the entity off or perhaps the the line is the length that we want we could move 
that circle and go from the intersection point. So I'll do this so it's obvious intersection here to that end point. And that means that this, this line is coming off perpendicular, meaning this angle and this angle are the same. Uh, or uh, you could you could kind of eyeball it, but we want to get a, we want to get out of that habit. Okay, so I'm just going to trim these guys just because just because. All right, and so now now we've got these beautiful beautiful flowers. Uh, we could mirror them across. The problem is that uh, we've got we've got all these little entities involved here, and when I move the flowers, I don't want to accidentally move just one piece. I want to move all of it all the time. And so the, the what we want to do is we want to actually go into the block command. Okay, a couple ways to get there. Uh, the easy way for me is to create a new block. So just type in block and it will open up this menu. In this case, I'm going to call it uh, flower. And I'm going to pick a base point. This is probably the most important bit of the block is picking your base point. You want a point that is going to be repeatable and that is logical that you're going to know every time I want to insert a flower, it's going to be at a specific point. And you could pick the center of the flower, you could pick the midpoint of the line, but obviously for me would be the base. Okay, so I'm going to pick that as my base point. And then we're going to pick the objects that we want. And so I'm making sure that I only pick the flowers. I don't pick anything to do with the house. And I'll press enter. And you can see the little thumbnail here. It's, uh, you know, quite small, but it, it represents everything that we have. And we're not going to deal with any of the, of the uh, behavior stuff right now. And we'll say, okay. Now you'll notice that it is a single entity. And as a matter of fact, if I use the insert command, uh, I can insert uh, the blocks. Insert. There's our flower. All right. And I can I can mirror this across. Again, okay, so there you go. It's on both sides, and that's fantastic. If not a little boring, let's uh, make it a little bit more interesting. Let's let's put some petals on these flowers. All right. So I'm going to zoom in here, and I'm going to draw an arc. Okay. And a couple ways to do it. You could draw an arc. Uh, a is the hotkey for arc. Uh, but I do want I do want to pick up the quadrant of this circle. Okay, and there are four quadrants, right? Top, bottom, left, right. I'm going to pick one of them, and I'm going to randomly pick the other two points. Something like that. All right. And because I'm a fan of symmetry, I'm going to mirror this cross like so. It's not quite the way I want it, so I'm going to actually grab these grips. And I'm going to play around with it a little bit till I get it the way I want it. Let's try mirroring that again. Oh, that's fantastic. All right, so... Uh, it looks like a fish though, doesn't it? It's not quite right. So let's go in here and uh, we're going to add a fillet. Okay. Fillet. And if I, if I fillet this, you'll notice that it gives me a square point. It's not really a fillet. It, it looks like a chamfer, but it's, yeah, it just closes the corner. So 
Let's try fill it again, but this time uh, you can type in R for radius, or if you use the down key, uh, you can get this menu. And so we'll pick a radius. And if I knew what radius I wanted, I could type it in. Or I could actually just pick two points. Uh, radius about that big. All right. And it does give you a preview. If you don't like it, you can, you can definitely do it again. So fill it. Radius. And in this case, I'll make it a little bit bigger. All right. It's not much bigger, but anyway, we'll call it good enough. The other thing is that our pedal kind of comes to a point here again. So I'm just going to move this and I'll turn on ortho again, which is my F8. Uh, and I'm just going to, I'm going to poke it inside my flower a little bit so that I can trim it. Like so. All right, beautiful little daisy. And then we're going to do that a whole bunch more times, right? Or not. Let's use the array function. And again, AutoCAD's great because there's a couple ways that we can do this. Uh, we can go in and select polar array. Uh, you can actually just start to type in array, AR, uh, and you can pick the entities that you want. And then you can choose polar array this way. Uh, if you do it this way, you can actually just choose polar array and select your items. Press enter. And then it asks you for a center point. In this case, we want to pick the center here. Uh, if you don't have your object snaps turned on, you can shift and right click and choose the center of that circle. And it opens up this huge menu. This is a very powerful unit. What this will allow you to do is uh, quickly and easily change things like the number of, of items. You could change the distance between them. You could change the fill area. Okay. Uh, just kind of whatever whatever you would like, okay? You make this look however you would like. Yeah. Lucky number 13. Okay, perfect. I like it. And so we could repeat this four more times, or we could actually just copy this object to each of our flowers and that's fantastic that's that's perfect right so does that mean we'd have to mirror it and, and deal with all that the answer the short answer is no no, uh, we definitely don't want to do more work than we have to. And so what we're going to do is we're going to redefine that block. And so if I go back into my new block and I do, the, do, do my little pull down menu here and pick flower and pick my base point again and select my objects again. And this time I'll take all of this and I'll say, okay. And it gives us a warning. It says you're about to redefine this block. Is this what you really want? You want to say yes, redefine it. Okay. And then we'll close it. Oh. And let me do that again because we missed a critical step. And that's perfect. Uh, okay. Redefine. It comes up and it says uh, the block flower references itself. And so this is actually, this is a paradox. So if I have a block and I'm making a block with that block in it, it, it creates this infinite loop. So what I need to do is I need to take this and I'm going to use a command called burst. Explode also works, but burst is nice because it won't allow you to go past uh, 
past a, a sing, single like solids okay uh, and so let's do our block again pick our base point this flower select our objects our base point perfect base point there 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 we'll say okay this time we'll redefine and it worked fantastically. And you'll notice that it updated even the mirrored section, right? And so that's perfect. That's perfect. Uh, so let's uh, try to now move this over to our, uh, our new layer. Oh, we don't have a layer for flowers. Let's put in our shrubbery. Uh, here, so I'm going to create a new one called flower, and we'll make our flowers magenta. Fantastic, flower is magenta, and I'll close this. I'm going to grab my block and I'm going to move it to flower. And well, it doesn't seem like anything happened, does it? I mean. I click on this entity and it says flower and so why didn't it change color the reason it didn't change color is because it's part of a block and so if I go back in and I burst this one more time let's burst this guy and now I, I highlight it notice that it is still in construction layer so let's move that to flower. And so our original flower moved, but our uh, our arrays did not. And so we need to go back in and we'll try to burst this again. And let's grab these guys. And now, now they're all individual items, but we can no longer use that wonderful tool for the arrays, okay? And so let's, uh, let's go ahead and try moving this all now to layer flower. And that's, that's perfect, I, I like that. As a matter of fact, while I'm here, I'm going to show you a bit of a no-no. Uh, I'm going to grab these guys and I'm going to change it from by layer or by block uh, to to a color of my choosing. In this case, I'll put um, yellow is not a great idea. I will leave that yellow, and we'll change this to a green. Green. There we go. And now I will use my block command again. Let's redefine flower, pick a base point, select my objects, press enter, okay, and redefine it. And now everything has a beautiful splash of color that uh, I, I like. Uh, all right. Okay, so that's a lot to cover today. We've done fillets, we've done arrays, uh, we've done uh, layers, we've talked about uh, line types, we've talked about entering values in, in manually, and we've created a drawing. So, a couple more things to deal with. One of them is uh, how to output this to, a, to, our, to our, our printer, if you would. Uh, so here we are in my layout tab, drawing of a hatch, and I'm going to go to my model mode, and we're going to zoom in where we're happy, and we can do things like turn off that line of symmetry here, okay, it's fantastic to me. If you want to zoom in a little bit more, we can zoom to a window and it's too much. There we go. 
call it good enough. We'll make sure that this is all filled in properly. And when, when your house is located where you want and you're in model mode, one of the things that you'll notice is down here at the bottom, there's a lock viewport. It's very good practice to lock that. The reason being is I can still, I can still get in and manipulate my geometry, uh, but it's, it's fixed on my paper. This becomes important once we start to put dimensions and text in our paper space. All right, so let's go back to paper space here. And um, yeah, we, we can do, we could, we could, we could center this a little bit better. We could do a few things, but we're going to call that good enough. And I'm going to run through this. I know we did this once before, but we want to make sure that we can actually output our files. Okay, so file, uh, we want to, uh, a couple things, a couple ways to do it. We could export as a PDF or we can print. The reason why I want to print is I want to show you a couple things. One is to do, uh, we're just going to do a single, single page. Uh, but the idea is that we're going to change the printer. In this case, uh, I could send it to my printer or we can go to the Microsoft print to PDF. The reason why I like this, especially when we're uh, dealing with a remote access is that I can, I can actually preview my plot. And when you're making a PDF, it's not a huge issue. You can always delete it. But when you're printing to paper, especially if these were large plots, you want to, you want to actually preview what you're about to output. And you can see this, this isn't quite centered. Uh, so we could go back and center it. Uh, I also noticed that it is in monochrome. And so we can go back and change the plot style, for example, to AutoCAD. And uh, now we can see that we do have, have our color. And we can also move this. So we wanted it to move up and to the right. So here we'll cancel. I will move. And it's very important that you're in paper space here. We want to grab this up and a little bit to the right. Let's try just going up. All right, so let's try that again. File, print, plot, preview. Definitely needs to go to the left. And you can see so far we would have killed a couple pieces of paper. So let's move this. File. And preview. Went a little bit too far. You get the idea. You could futz around with this until till you're uh, till you're happy. Okay, back to it. okay. Now, one thing that you will find is that um, if if you don't save this or apply it to the layout, you'll have to do it each and every time. So, if you get this set the way you want it, do apply it to to your to your drawing, and then say okay. Okay, and in this case, it's going to send a PDF and let's just pop it on my desktop. I'll say, okay. And here is the output and it's perfect. It's fantastic. All right. Okay, what else do we have to talk about today? I think that pretty much sums it up. I hope that you had fun with this. It it is intended to be uh, light and and enjoyable, uh, uh, as much as uh, getting through this is to anybody. And trust me, I empathize with you. I absolutely remember uh, learning AutoCAD myself 
way back in the AutoCAD 10 days. Uh, I a bit of a uh, bit of a struggle because I actually learned it on my own. Uh, so yeah, I know what you're going through. All right. Uh, so let's talk about what is due for the lab. This is again 2D practice, so we have a few widgets to make. These are not overly exciting, but they will reinforce the tools that we've been working on. All right. So first is this uh, piece of cheese, if you will, uh, and I would like you to follow through the instructions step by step. Uh, the both the instructions for for the lab and the exercise are both online on DC Connect. So feel free to download those. Uh, but go through this step by step. And I want you to uh, recreate this this piece of piece of cheese and save it as drawing two. make sure that you upload it as a PDF to uh, DC Connect. Uh, so that I can mark it. Then I want you to create uh, this, these two blocks, and you're going to use relative moves. Okay, so you can use the at symbol to give you each location as you move across. Okay, and then I would like you to continue to use your dynamic input to make this widget. All right, and so you're going to end up giving me. Um, all three zip files. Uh, make sure you zip them together. If you don't know how to use zip, uh, I do recommend WinZip or WinRAR. Okay, and uh, great instructions on how to use those. And uh, yeah, get them into me. Make sure they're on time. I want to keep up to date on my marking. And uh, if you have any questions, comments, please feel free to send me an email. And if you're starting to fall behind, let me know right away. And we'll try to get you caught up uh, so that so that you don't you don't end up in in the in the weeds. Quite often, I have students come to me in week 10, 11, 12, uh, complaining that they're so far behind and they've been losing marks because of late assignments. That's not the time to say that I've, you know, you, the speed of the course was too much and I couldn't keep up. If, you know, we're in week three and you're really, really struggling, my first recommendation is always practice more. Okay. This is, this is a tool and the more you use it, the better you'll get. I realize that there's a lot of homework in this class. Uh, it's only going to get worse. Uh, so, Spend your time now, make drawings that aren't good now, get critiqued now, restart your drawings now, because now is easy. All right, so don't feel bad if you're making that piece of cheese and you realize you've made a mistake to just erase everything and start again. Okay, it's frustrating, but it's absolutely the way to do it. All right, so. Have a good day, work hard, and let me know if you have any trouble. All right? Thanks. Bye now.